Hello there, Jake here. Today, I'm gonna to tell you everything you need to know on how to make a pen. Everything. 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 The first thing I'm gonna show you is this blank that we're gonna to turn today. This is a blank we make on the live show Saturday morning cartoons. You just need a blank. It can be out of wood or resin or resin and wood. This is called the hybrid uh, blank that we're gonna use. It is super cool. I actually made it for this purpose so we can give it away on the show. So go check out the show. I'll show you some of the tools that we need to get this turned. The first thing we're gonna need is a pen kit and I keep mine at the bottom of this box. And I keep them right here. So these are long woods. The long wood pen kits have a long part. <laughs> it's one piece and it has a long part on it. So you're gonna show most of this, this blank. The other thing you're gonna need is some bushings. I keep the bushings with those pin kits. So all of these different ones, I keep the bushings in there with them. This is from Rockler. These are the bushings to go with it. I'll set these to the side and I'll close this back up. When we open up this part, I'm gonna go over some of these tools that I use and just keep in mind there's, there's plenty of ways to do everything, but this is how I do it. The first thing you're gonna need to do is cut this and then to size and then we're gonna go ahead and drill it. This drill bit right here is a special one for that pin kit because they're so long, it's a little bit longer. So this is 3 8 so I'm gonna keep this out over here that we're gonna need that. This is an insertion tool, just put, goes on like this and you do it like that once again. This is probably unnecessary, but I like using it and I'll show you. I'm gonna keep that out. If this was a two piece pin kit, we would use this kind of a mandrel and you can put them in there and put the bushings in there like that. But we have a one piece, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the between centers mandrel. That's gonna go like that, and we'll show you that in a second. I'll keep those out. We're gonna need a barrel trimmer. So after we get this glued into the pin blank, we're gonna leave a little bit extra. This is gonna go in there like that on a drill, and we're gonna go to it's just perfectly flat like that. And then that's it. So this comes in a kit, has a bunch of these different inserts for different size pin tubes. So I'm gonna keep this out. A little while later, we're gonna use these. These are just plastic things. So whenever we're doing glue or uh, polishing compound or whatever, it's not gonna stick to this. So I'll keep these out. Uh, later on, we're gonna have to put this thing together. Uh, some people use uh, just squeeze clamps to, to press their pin together. I like doing it on the lathe, so. That's what I use. Uh, let's see, uh, I think that's all that I need for right now. So we're gonna go cut this blank. The first thing we need to do is decide which part of this blank we wanna use. And I think this, these swirls in here are fantastic. So I think I want most of that. So I'm just gonna leave it like that and cut off more of the wood than that. So anyway, this I'm gonna use this part of the blank. What I need to do first is get this jig and move this stop block. So you're gonna stop it where you want it. This blade is all the way to the end of this curve. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space. That way you have a little bit of extra when we glue this in there on each side. I'll, I'll lock this stop block down. Hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna leave this on here and there is some space in between the blade and that pin tube. I don't wanna cut any of this over here, so I'm gonna put that up against the stop block and cut it. The next tool that we need is a lathe. I used the Harbor Freight lathe for years and there's nothing wrong with that. They make bench top lathes. There's all kinds of different brands and everything. I happen to have a Nova Nebula. It's a, it's a brand new lathe on the market. I am absolutely in love with it. It's a luxury for me to have this. Uh, but so that being said, don't be afraid to start doing pin turning on a small, cheap budget uh, lathe. It will make a pin. The next step is we need to drill through this so we can put a pin tube in it. So let's go ahead and do that. I have an easy wood tools chuck. It's super awesome. 
This is also a luxury item, but I won't go without it anymore. So you just kind of stick it in there like that. And the, these jaws right here will hold it straight. You could also drill with a drill press with a, with a jig or a, a centering jig or whatever like that. But this is how we do it. This is how I'm going to do it. And then the next thing, I have my live center still on there. So all I'm going to do here is lock that down. I'm just going to put a divot in here. And then I'm going to take the live center out and put the Jacobs chuck in. This drill bit, this special drill bit, we're going to go ahead and put that in there. Then we're going to drill it. We put that divot at the end of that so that the end of this drill bit can find it and then it can start true. So sometimes these have a tendency to wobble around a little bit because it's long. So if we can find that divot, it's going to, it's going to be true from the start and go through. So 500 RPM about is what I do. So let's go. Uh, the other thing is I'll go in a little bit and then come back out and clean it out with air hose just so it's not getting all jumbled up and it'll get hot and all these will get full. So let's just, let's just do it and show you. We're gonna continue to do this until we're through. It'll be obvious when it goes through. It's through. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Be careful and ready. There you go. So we'll just clean it off with air hose a little bit more. And then, then we'll, we'll go to glue it. At this point in time, I would get this blank and I would put it up to the light and see if I see any light coming through here. And there's a little bit coming through here, but I don't think it's bad enough to when we get this turned down, you're going to be able to see through it and see the pin tube. If it was like that, I would go ahead. I put denatured alcohol in here. I would clean it up. Some... Um, pipe brushes or whatever and and then go ahead and spray paint it and then whatever color you think would look cool and sometimes when you have some see-through stuff or money blanks or stuff like that you paint it in there and it makes it look really cool it, it looks like what you wouldn't expect it to but this one is pretty good so we're just gonna I'm gonna put some denatured alcohol in here clean it up make sure it looks good and then we'll get it glued one thing we don't need to forget is that we need to sand this. We don't need to go crazy. It just doesn't need to be shiny. So we'll just go ahead. This is 120 grit. I'm sure other grits will work. So I just grab it and do about like that. So you can see, you can see the difference. So I'll go ahead and finish this. Now we have our tube prepped. So I'll set that there. We have our blank prepped. I'll set that right there. And we got Z epoxy. This is 30 minute, 30 minute epoxy. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. And the theory is this is gonna have less of a chemical reaction, less of a harsh one. And instead of using five minute epoxy or something that's immediate, we'll use this stuff. And there's, the theory is that there's a, it makes this brittle on the ends. So you'll have some chip out or, or, or things like that. Now, who knows, but I've been doing this like this and I haven't had very many failures. So this is what I use. Once again, I'll have links to this stuff below, but we're gonna go equal parts. Doesn't take much. This uh, paper that I'm putting it on is the back of a, a shipping label. So I use the shipping labels when I ship things. I keep the backing so that we can have something to glue on. And when we're done, we we'll just Throw it away. This is probably way too much. I was talking and not paying attention. So let's get it mixed up here. 
And we have plenty of time, so there's, that's the other good thing about using the 30 minute stuff. You're not worried about uh, watching the clock. So get this mixed up as best you can. And then we'll put the tube in there. I mixed it for a couple minutes. So now we'll sit there and I'll, whoops, watch out for that. I'll put the insertion tool in there. You know, just kind of slather it all up. And I don't think there's a neat way to do this. Some people are probably better at it than I am, but God bless them. That's all I can say. I'll just slather it on there, and I don't worry about getting it on this insertion tool either. And I'll show you why in a second. Woo! Just make sure there's plenty on there. Go ahead and get this and put it on there, move it all around. Switch sides if you want to. I'm going to put some in here actually. Just put some in there. That way you know. Go ahead and put it all the way in there, moving it all around. Make it go further than what it needs to. And then put some more on this. <laughs> like I said, I'm not that neat at this, but it gets glued in. So you're gonna go back. Push that in to where it's barely. Remember how we cut this? We should have a little bit of room on each side. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, there we go. That's the ticket right there. It's a little bit in there, so we'll be able to barrel trim it later. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of denatured alcohol on this and clean this blank off so it doesn't stick to anything like it just did. <laughs> make sure the ends are clean. And I'll double check it a couple times to make sure that the tube stays where I put it. And then when good enough is good enough, and you're satisfied, Set it down. I'll come back and check it in a little bit. And then we will continue. Whoops. almost forgot. This insertion tool has a glue all over it. I put a little bit of denatured alcohol on this, on this towel, on this paper towel, and it comes right off. Hmm, just like new. This is several hours later, and it's in there. As you can see, I have a little bit of space right there to barrel trim and right there you can also notice that that's not in the center of that and that is so it drilled it a little crooked but we don't see big gaps over here or anything so it should be pretty good uh, just make sure you get plenty of glue on there uh, you should do better than this but i'm going to show you that this will work anyway and it's going to be fine uh, so the barrel trimmer is this i have the appropriate sized uh, shaft on there so it's just going to go in there like that, a little bit of glue in there, and it's gonna clean that up. And I'll show you, and then we'll get it on the lathe. You're in no hurry when you're doing this, so just go a little bit at a time. As soon as it's shiny all the way around like that, then we're gonna be good. And I'll show you on this, this side also. There you go. Here are the between centers uh, mandrels. So the one, the drive one, and here's a live one. This one's gonna go right here. This one goes in the end. And here's the bushings that go with that pin kit. And we're gonna go ahead and put those on. And then we'll get our blank. We're gonna put our blank up here. We we'll lock this down. We're gonna put a little bit of pressure up here and basically we just want, when we start turning, we don't want this to stop. We wanna have enough pressure on here 
to make sure it's going to turn mechanically and not stop but we don't want to overdo it where it's going to bend things and then you're not going to have a clean whenever you put your pin together you're going to have a line you're going to feel on one side and not the other so just tighten it up a little bit and then we get ready to turn i normally use uh, air shield pro whenever i'm uh, turning and i actually use it around the shop too when i'm on the table saw and stuff like that i, I use it all the time but for today since i need to talk to you i'm just going to use face shield like this these are uh, these are pretty common in wood turning so and they're pretty cheap and they work so i'm going to use this today but i love this thing all right what i'm going to use as a turning tool is the easy wood tools negative rake carbide this is a rougher they have all of their different tools have negative rakes to it but this helps with chip out on resin so i'm going to go ahead and do that i have this set to 3000 rpm so i'm just going to go ahead and start getting this cut down and try to get it round We're just going to take a quick look at it real quick and we're taking the the corners off of it and everything's going about how i expect it to i did see it stop one time so i'm going to loosen this up and just do a little bit of a turn on that tail stock to tighten it up a little bit more and hopefully that won't stop anymore so i'm going to continue There's a couple of ways to know if this is round or not. You can put that up there as long as it's not bouncing around it's round or if you're doing something like this, it'll have ribbons coming off of it. It'll have pretty good ribbons that'll fly off of there. And then you can go ahead and take a look. Look at that. Now continue and I'm going to go down to these bushings, down to these bushings. So I'll do a little bit more turning and get it, to get it close. The tip of this cutter is supposed to be even with the center line of this turning and it wasn't. So I needed to lower it down a little bit. This is going to sound a whole lot better now. Okay, we're getting a lot closer here. This, this shape's coming along. I haven't had any major catastrophes yet, but as you can see, this here is the bushing and that's where we've turned till. So we have this little bit of, of shadow right there in between here and here. And I wanna get that as close to that as possible without gouging underneath. So I'm gonna take a little bit of time and get down there and we'll come back when I'm, when I'm satisfied, but right before we start sanding. I'm not quite sure if you can see that, but I have a little bitty chip on here. I'm pretty close to the, the bushing, so I don't want to push it too much. I'm going to start standing right here. I'm going to do it with, with 120, and we'll go over that process real quick. Uh, this one, I'm going to sand down to the bushings. Now, some people get right there. There might be real good turners, and they'll get right there and then start sanding. If I didn't have that, I would turn a little bit further, but I don't want to chip that anymore, so I'm going to start sanding right now. Have this Abernet sandpaper. I do have a video that goes in depth on sanding uh, resin and things like that. So I'll put it in the cards up there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and this does have dust collection here. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. But the thing is you're gonna go and we're gonna turn on the lathe and go this way. I'm gonna turn it down to about 500. We're gonna go this way with the lathe on and then I'm gonna sand this way and then we'll get that down to the bushings and make sure everything's cool. So I'm going to start doing that. Go ahead. So this is sanded at 120 grit. We're going to go 240, 320, 400, and I'm going to wet sand at 600. And once again, I will have a, a sanding video above, but this is just at 120. This is denatured alcohol. 
and this thing is going to be cool. So that just kind of cleans that. I'm going to come back after we're at 600 and we're going to show you how to do a CA finish. Next thing I'm going to do, I showed you guys these earlier. These are going to replace these bushings in here so that we're about to do a CA finish so that the CA won't stick to this or any of the finish. So we're going to do that. Let's go put these up so I don't lose them. This is a uh, mercury adhesives. It's a thin flex and a medium flex. We're going to do that. And we have the activator here too. So we're going to go ahead and do about five to eight coats of the thin and then five to eight coats of the, the medium. And I'll go ahead and show you that. So you're just going to put it on here, put it on here like this, put some on here. Go ahead and turn that on. Yeah, put some more on there. I start in the middle and go to the sides. That way I don't have a bunch of overrun on the sides. And then you go ahead and spray it. And I'm going to do that five to eight times. And I'm also going to do the same thing with the medium. So we'll come back when those coats are all done. Here it is after the CA finish. Now we have to sand this and the trick is to get it sanded flat without going through the CA finish. So we're going to, I'm going to start at 320. You don't have to start as low as you did before because it's the underneath is flat. So all we want to do is flatten the CA surface. So I'll just go ahead and do like this. And I'll do a real quick little run down here and then we'll be able to see the lines in it. And I do also have a video on how to do a CA finish on pins and I'll, I'll put a, a card to that and a link below. But check this out real quick. When I turn this, you're gonna be able to see little shiny lines going around here. And that's what we're trying to get rid of. There's already spots that are sanded, but we're gonna go ahead and get that flat like that. So now we're gonna go like this. And I just quickly did it the other way just to show you. And when I get it flat, I'll come back and, and I'll show you. This is sanded just to 320. We knocked it flat, so it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna dry sand it up to 400 and then go to Zona paper, and I'll show you that for a second. This uh, paper I've been using, the Abernap, you can use it wet, but I don't like getting it wet because I wanna see the scratches. So once you start getting that wet, you won't be able to see the scratches, but um, after 400, I'm pretty confident about wet sanding after that. So to each their own, but I'll come back when we're ready for the Zona paper. This is to 400 and now Zona paper starts at 600. And if you don't know what Zona paper is, is this stuff, it, it goes by microns, but there is a conversion chart here, 600, uh, 1200, 1800, and 8,000. So pink is 8,000, that's where we're going to. I got it stacked up right here. This is all you need. So this big old <laughs> hunk of sandpaper right here lasts forever. That's, this is all I've used so far and I've, and I've been doing stuff a lot. So you can use it multiple times and we're gonna start with green and let's go. All right, this is the zone of paper up to pink and it looks good right now. So we're gonna do magic juice. It's the next step. There's bottles like this, there's six steps. This is a friction polish. So I have the lathe at 3000. You're gonna put like a, it says a pencil eraser size. This is on a pen, you probably don't need all that much, but about like that. And how I do it is I have the lathe off and you'll be able to see this go from dull to shiny. And this is gonna get your fingers hot and stuff like that, so be mindful of that. So what I do is I just put it up there like that, turn the lathe on and, and rub it in like that. And you can watch this, just get shiny, and hopefully it's a good camera angle on it. My finger's getting pretty hot right now, so I'm hoping it 
but I can see it got shiny and it's very clear when it's done. And that is right now. And we're gonna, you just imagine, we got five more steps of this stuff and I'm gonna go ahead and go through all five of them and I'll come back. It, each one is exactly the same like that. They're made of different consistencies or whatever, but then the last one's almost, it's not quite water, but it's pretty thin. So be careful when you do that one. I'll come back when I'm on that one. So let's just get there. Here's the press that we use. It's in between centers. You can use clamps or however you see somebody else do it, but these work out pretty good for me. Some come with directions. I think these ones, I had to print these off the website. So you go ahead and I just set it out here like this. And then I go ahead and put this in here and clamp it together. I press it on together. And then next thing you know, we're gonna have a beautiful pin like this. This thing turned out fantastic. My intention with this video was to show you a start to finish and, and what I do with most pins. Uh, hopefully it was easy to understand. If you got something out of this video, come and subscribe to the channel. By the time you see this, somebody would have won this on Saturday morning cartoon. So come and check us out and we'll see you guys next time and y'all be good.